Coastal Highway Project Pro. Reps to summon Edun Umahi, Attorney General of the Federation. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Quality. The House of Representatives on Thursday resolved to probe the ongoing 15 trillion Naira Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway project. As such, the House said it would set up an ad hoc committee which would investigate the project and submit a report within four weeks. The resolution of the House followed the adoption of a motion of urgent public importance moved during plenary by the member representing Gua East, Gua West Federal Constituency, Benue State, Mr. Austin Achado. The House also resolved to summon the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Agbemi SAN, the Minister of Finance, Wale Edun, and his works counterpart, Dr. Uh, David Umayi, to shed more light on the project. But the Ministry of Works defended the project, saying, it followed due process. It also said the House of Representatives members that pledged support for the project. A 700 kilometer turnpike infrastructure, the Coastal Highway project has attracted commendation and condemnation since the, Tinum since the Bola Metinumbo administration approved it in February. The 10 lane coastal road was designed to connect Lagos to Cross River passing through Ogun, Ondo, Delta, Bayelsa, Rivers, and Akwaibom states before culminating in Calabar, the Cross River State Capital. Under the Good Luck Jonathan, under Good Luck Jonathan, the highway was to cost 12 billion US dollars and 11.1 billion under Muhammadu Buhari. It was subsequently expanded from a four-lane dual carriageway to a ten-lane highway. Minister of Works Dev Umayi disclosed that the construction of the coastal road was expected to span eight years and cost four billion naira per kilometer. So far, the minister disclosed that the Federal Executive Council had approved the release and approved and released 1.06 trillion for the contractor for the pilot phase of the construction, which started at the Eco Atlantic City and will terminate at Lekki Deep Sea Port. Although many have lauded the ambitious project, authors faulted the process of the award of the contract that led to the emergence of ITEC Construction Company Nigeria Limited as the preferred contractor. Umai had explained that the reason for awarding the contract to ITEC without competitive bidding as laid down by the laws was because of the company's quote-unquote track record. Umayi said the approval process went through the Bureau of Public Procurement after consideration by the Federal Executive Council as prescribed by law. Aside from the cost, the demolition of structures along the right of way of the project, particularly the hospitality outlets around the Lagos beaches, has sparked public discourse on the project. We are now being joined by an economist, Mukhtar Mohamed. We also have a public affairs analyst, Biodu Shoumi. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. I'm Mukhtar, let's start with you. What is your what is your initial take on the Lagos Calabar uh, uh, project? Well, for me, um, it's a good project, but again, we must look at um, other things before we make decisions. Um, what we see in Nigeria. Once it's done, once it's a good project, we don't think to take stakeholders along so that we can have smooth implementation of the project. Uh, when it comes to the Calabar Coast, Lagos Calabar Coast Road, there's a lot of um, controversies, uh, whether it was not open publicly for bidding, 
one company got it and um, again uh, there's the place of integrity where uh, it seems to be news that the, the 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 son of the president is a member of the board of that um, company that was given the contract and so all these are things that uh, makes a very good project no, to uh, show with a lot of uh, control Mukta, Mukta, the son of the president is allegedly a member of a sister company owned by the same family shaguri but not yes not uh, uh, the construction company itself yes sorry that was, uh, so but again that is conflict of interest whether sister company whether the company but for me i think economically you are seeing a project that's going to link about 12 states uh that will be for economic activities along that exit you are seeing a project that is going to uh, maybe provide a lot of jobs. Yeah, I mean, if that project starts now, the own skills we get jobs. But then you need to look at the monumental losses in terms of businesses and in terms of people that will lose their home to this project also. But again, uh, it's boiled down to government being able to settle some of these people that have these issues. But I think economically it's a viable project but socially um it's a different or board game because you have people that uh, will have to, to 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 lose their jobs i'm not talking about the issue of um, landmark for now because uh, if you look at it um, the government owns the waterway now we need to ask um, a lot of questions whether landmark actually propose where uh, purchase the seashore because what the the minister have told us is all the shanties along the seashores where they want destroyed. No structure of landmark was touched. So we need to ask questions. Whether they actually paid for that also, or do they have a right of way to that also? Those are questions that we we'll need to ask. But economically, looking at it from an economic perspective, I think it's a very, very laudable project. But I have my challenge, it's going to be a project that's going to take eight years to implement. And already, we are already having challenges. Remember, this project has been there, President, uh, like, you, like your report have said it, but none of them have had the, um, even, even started it. So I think uh, the Minister of, um, uh, of, 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 um, of Works should be commended, but people are just saying the, with, the, with the rush in ways they are trying to do the Calabar, uh, uh, Lagos Calabar Road, Coastal Road, um, make people become so suspicious because they feel that there are other rules that need urgent attention that are not being given the attention. But again, like I said, economically, it looks okay. very, very good project. O okay, let but me. Socially, in terms of how we have come, I'll about come back. I'll come it, back to you. There's let, still let, a lot to desire. Let, let, uh, let's bring in uh, Biodu Shumumi now. Biodu, you you have one or two things to stay as your as your prologue. Yes. Um, in the first instance, um, the issue of uh, this coastal highway did not just start today. It predates, you know, even predated our independence. The coastal highway, Lagos to Calabar coastal highway, had been envisaged long ago, you know, before independence. And uh, clearly, it was um, conceived by Okoti Ebo, who later became the finance commissioner, and he wanted to execute the project. Federal Finance um, Minister. In the Commissioner for Finance. Federal it Finance a, Minister. It was First Republic, so it was a ministry. It was the soldiers, the army who introduced yeah. federal commissioners. So Kotiebo was mm -hmm. a Federal Finance Minister. Under, Whichever, can, uh, I, can I continue with my prologue? Please go. And this, this went on and on, each government differing on um, implementing it until when the Tinubu's administration decided to take it head on. Now, after taking the project head on, then there were also criticisms around um, whether the federal government, you know, has a right to, um, uh, to, to to encroach or to clear some properties on the shoreline. Of course, the federal government came out with the superior argument, which had been affirmed by the Supreme Court, that 240 meters um, from the shoreline belongs to the federal government. That's a recent Supreme Court ruling. So, therefore, that argument fell by the wayside. Then we now have the issues around the cost of implementing the project. But when it became clear that it would include the standard gauge line 
you know, straight down to Calabar, again, that fizzled away. Then we now have another issue being brought up, which is about Cheiti Numbo uh, being on the board of CDK, which is based in Shagamu, a sister, a company in which the Shagori brothers hold uh, minority shares, not majority shares, even in CDK. She sits on that board. Correct. There is no majority shares. And meanwhile, is ITEC that got the contract? She does not sit on the board of ITEC. There is no law in Nigeria. And meanwhile, Cheyi has been on the board since 2018. There is no requirement under our constitution or any act of parliament that stipulates that on the president, so on somebody is elected as the president, all the siblings must abandon their job. It's, the requirement is only in relation to the president when it comes to conflict of interest. Where does the conflict of interest arise when Cheyi was on the board since 2018? It was not CDK that got the contract, it was ITEC. And the Chagori brothers only had minority shares in CDK. They had only minority I, I, shares. I want to believe... I, so I cannot I, see where that is coming from. I want to believe you, you, you had a slip of tongue when you referred to Cheyi as sibling. I, you probably meant son. Oh, sorry. Cheyi uh, Tunumbu uh, uh, son, yes. Uh, 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 but having, having said that, Cheyi is a grown, uh, city, grown individual uh, a bona fide citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria whose rights are quite independent of his parents. And I see, I want to believe one of the points you have subtly made too is the fact that there is no law that restrains him or constrains him from being uh, an, a, you know, a, a shareholder in a company uh of his uh, of his choice i want to believe that is the point you're making absolutely but he's not a shareholder in INEC. yes uh, in itec in itec yeah okay uh Mukhtar, i guess you will agree with me that a number of uh misinformation or deliberate disinformation um were given some degree of traction relating to this uh, lagos calabar highway issue there was a time when it was blown all over the internet that uh, the the real estate assets of landmark were going to be were going to be demolished uh, the minister came into the picture met the gentleman and ultimately it became obvious that uh, the the props, the props with which they do bridge front trades, that are that, that were literally located on the well-defined coastal area belonging to the federal government, as as stipulated by international law, is the law that law is not peculiar to Nigeria that it was only those shanties uh, or those props in his own case we couldn't call it shanties uh, the props that he was using for some of the beachfront uh, commercial activities that he was doing that were, that were going to be knocked down now I, I'm sitting there thinking is it proper that in the bid to to do a project that will inevitably uh, galvanize economic activities for millions and millions of Nigerians. Is it proper that we engage in such misinformation and with a view to stopping the government from doing what will what will positively impact many millions of Nigerians at the expense of one or two uh, people who indeed were ultimately found to have been to have misrepresented the facts regarding what was to be demolished and what ultimately was demolished. Uh, Mukta, your response please. Uh, I, I think like we said um, in terms of um, the federal, I mean the the dissemination of information, misinformation, like I said, is because of the way that the federal government tend to implement projects. 
Um, some of these are projects are projects that are well thought after, or the information we normally get from or most of these projects are really not um, uh, in terms of dissemination of information are really not um, top notch. So I I think they should work on that. When you want to get a problem, you, you project you have to do the public enlightenment, especially the point of the landmark that you that you brought up today. Um, it, it was all awash in the social media space and a lot of people were saying a lot of things that were not right. But again, like you rightly pointed out, I think it has to do from the side of the government. When you, when you want to do a project, you need to, to make sure that you have dot the line, dot the teeth, and, and know that you are, doing, uh, you are doing all you have to do to make sure that the, the project is a success. So I totally, um, totally agree with you that um, most of uh, what was being cried all over social media is not supposed to be so. But uh, again, um, it is what it is when it comes to Nigeria. We tend to go faster than um, getting the people across. But I, I totally agree that um, the federal government did not do so much when it comes with, uh, with information, dissemination okay. Muka, to of Nigeria. Uh, Mukta, I'll come back to you with the peculiar, uh, the seemingly innovative methodology uh, through which the project is to be financed. Let, let me go first to to show me uh, and uh, uh, Biodu, uh, yes. do, you, do you have a word or two to say on how initially uh, it was uh, it was uh, I, I don't want to use some words coming coming on my tongue but the, the, the internet was inundated with with uh, information and representations that ultimately did not quite um, were not quite consistent with ultimate with what was ultimately done regarding the things that were demolished, the so-called envisaged uh, demolishment of uh, landmarks uh, landmarks real estate assets. Uh, what do you want to say? Mukta believes that the fault could also uh, be pinpointed back to the federal government because if they are done, their PR and public enlightenment and uh, public this thing well, they, they pro probably wouldn't have been caught uh, on the hind, uh, hind limbs. What's the thing? Yeah, yeah Mukta could be right on the fact that they could have done more in terms of sensitization. But we should not forget one thing, that the issue of Lagos to Calabar Coastal Highway is not a recent project. As far back as uh, under the Jonathan's regime, they actually did acquisition, you know, of land, you know, all through towards Epe on the route uh, that will be taken. So those who went to buy land in those areas which had already been acquired probably did not do a proper check with the land bureau in Lagos. That is uh, possible. And some of them may be ignorant of the fact that they bought lands from uh, land speculators and land, um, 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 what do they call it, um, landowners who had previously collected some money. So they may not be aware. So if government had done more enlightenment, probably they would not have been caught up in that. But there are also other people who built shanties along the route which had been cleared, you know, by federal government. Those who have genuine uh, papers, for instance, see of or the um, building permit approval from Lagos State government would certainly be compensated, and many of them have already started receiving compensation. So yes, we could do better in terms of um, a public enlightenment than what the federal government did. They seems to be in a hurry to execute the project. Uh, in a hurry to execute the project is the phraseology that uh, also speaks to the fact that. Uh, uh, and I really want be able to show me to attend to this. Uh, the, the phraseology that came out from your last statement uh, speaks to the fact that uh, some, some processes were not quite adhered to in terms of uh, you know advertising a, a, a bid of, of that magnitude and letting uh, letting companies who believe they are up to par uh, submit their bids 
uh, uh, so the the phraseology that you used may may be something that may ultimately yeah. and, and in the backdrop of that we having we having the House of Representatives now setting up another committee with a view also to to uh, intervene uh, some federal executive members, prominent federal executive members, the Attorney General, the Minister of Finance, and indeed uh, David Mai, the Federal Minister for Works. What would be your response to that? Yes, um, no doubt um, the Tinubu's administration knows that they have eight years to execute that, that project, and they are already in the first one year. Um, it's a project which is the biggest project uh, currently coastal project in Africa and they are in a hurry to ensure that they could do as much as possible uh, before leaving office in seven in, um, um, if he wins the second term and again we should not forget how this project was originally conceived it was meant to be a private sector finance initiative which was approved but later it became obvious that um, a certain uh, government has to contribute about 30 percent of the construction cost when that became obvious, they went back to the Federal Executive Council, it went through the deal process, and it was subsequently, you know, approved um, uh, by the um, uh, FEC after the deal process issued their own certificate. Now, the issue is whether postal project is not only in the growth of GDP. You only need to look at Lekki when Jack only did the Lekki road how Lekki opened up and became something else. It became money spinner. So you can imagine what would happen once that road is constructed, how many new industries that will spring up, the the the, uh, the 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 value that we added to the GDP, that's one thing. Secondly, the project is conceived throughout the lifespan to employ 500,000 people. So how many people will lose their jobs to start with? Very infinitesimal. We are not talking about 5,000 people. That's not what we're talking about, you know, on that road. Then uh, with creation of 500,000 jobs, that for me is fantastic. And if you go to anywhere in the old world where you have coastal highway, that coastal highway has been a money spinner, you know, uh, uh, through tourism. And for me, it's a win-win situation, irrespective of the, um, so the, the, the pains that will be experienced by a few number of people. We should not forget that there is no gain without pain. And that's quite very important. And I applaud the government for taking this bold initiative to start this project. In the same way, I would expect the government again to commence the Badabi or whether you call it um, Agbara to Shokoto Road um, because it's, it's a road. They're trying to construct a road around the whole country and open up new areas, you know, for uh, new investments, you know, I, by. I, I, um, I, I'm not. He's brilliant. I, I'm not particularly surprised that uh, you, are, you are calling from the Badagri, uh, the, the, the spore from Badagri, the. the Spore well, to the Lagos Calabar Road from Badagri to Sokoto. I'm not particularly surprised because uh, uh, if my memory serves me right, somebody has a royal linkage with one of the lightly, uh, lightly kingdoms. Absolutely, in Atom Ota, yes. The road went through Atom. Okay, you, you said it yes. yourself. I, I didn't, yes. I, I didn't spill, it, I didn't spill it on, <laughs> on you. Yes. Anyway. Uh, let me go to Mukhtar now and let's speak to some of the the peculiar the peculiar financial contrivance of the of, of the project. Uh, Mukhtar, uh, we've heard of the conventional PPP before. We've heard of uh, uh, the private sector sometimes uh, practically being being given the concession to do a project like this. But we have a peculiar, uh, a peculiar nomenclature for this. You are, you are an economics person. You want to help us and uh, the, the very unique financing architecture that is built into it. You want to, you want to help us with that? Well, you see, when, when we talk about things like this, we normally talk about the PPP. Uh, but this seems to be very different, and sometimes uh, we tend in Nigeria tend to come up with their own homegrown ways, or maybe it's our own homegrown ways of uh, trying to finance this project as it stands now. Which is uh, which, like which I want to believe is good. I, 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 I may be yeah, wrong. It, 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 it is good, 
But again, uh, it's good, but like um, implementation has always been a problem when it comes to this project. And especially now, it looks like due process were not followed through. And so when you get, begin to get the National Assembly, get themselves involved in, uh, that, that means they were not involved in the appropriation, they were not carried along. And so when it gets there now, it becomes a little bit shady because a lot of things begin to come out. Sometimes these things are not true, but again, by the time you get to pu public views, they are viewing it like um, they are doing it for themselves, they are not doing it for us. So I think one large, uh, uh, we, we, sometimes when we start asking questions that they begin to tell us about, oh, this is how the finances is going to happen, this is how it's going to happen, this is how it's going to happen, they are not always coming clear, you know, at the beginning to say, you know what, this is what should be done. This is how it should be done. I think for me, that was the problem. We mustn't be asking questions. Uh, because a lot of people were asking questions, is that the right project at this time? And the federal government started explaining. I think all these things were most, should have been kept. And then due process followed. It get the National Assembly involved. Um, the situation by the National Assembly is coming for a proof. Because that's, you know, foreign, foreign investors that want to invest in your country, when they begin to see lack of a uh, 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 judicial process, especially when there is no uh, rule of law, and, um, and I keep saying it, uh, protection of intellectual properties, they tend to look at that before they want to invest in your country. So when you are doing a, high, a, a very good... If you may help me, uh, Mukhtar, how is intellectual property rights violated in, in, in a project in this project specifically? No, 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 no. Uh, or are you speaking or are you speaking I'm to uh, are you speaking I'm to saying, what is generally I'm saying, opined to be lack of I'm, transparency or accountability? I'm only saying I'm saying that when foreign investors want to come to your country, they look at these two rules. They look at your, the rule of law and uh, intellectual properties. I'm not talking as intellectual properties as regards this current project. Um, in this project, I'm looking at the rule of law, due okay. process. With due process. I'm saying that they tend to look at what due process follow. It could be a foreign investor that wants to in invest in this project. Will he be confident enough to want to invest when he realized that due process were not followed? So that's what I'm trying to say about it. But I I I'm not saying due because the minister kept saying that due process was followed. But again, if you watch his interview with a lot of, um, with some journalists, it became more or less like a comedy. He was not able to come out clear and answer a, a lot of questions. So I think when you get, I keep saying, when you use a word like, like true, it tends to bring negativity to the forefront. Ordinary it should be, it should not. But when you say you are probing a project, you are calling for proof. It's, 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 that word echo a lot of uh, negativity. Thank you very much, Mukhtar. Uh, 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 Mukhtar just made a point on the, on the peculiar financing portfolio of the project, but not so much about that, uh, but, but uh, for him, uh, which is right about uh, the, the, the standard that is seemingly below what could be said to be consistent with the rule of law. When, when processes are not properly followed, when procedures are jumped, and uh, when it's gotten to a point where even members of the House of Representatives are so alarmed that they formed an ad, ad hoc committee to look into, into the project and ministers have been summoned uh, to face the house. Uh, you, you have one or two things to say to that, Biyoti uh, Shomumi, regarding uh, the managers of the project practically uh, getting themselves into a cul de sac of a sort, a PR cul de sac of a sort. Is Mukhtar there? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I want to believe that 
you know, like Biodun gave the example when Alaji Latif Jakonde, uh, then as governor of Lagos State, uh, instead of instead of the road the route we used to take to Ekwe in those days, we would go we would go through Ikorodu Road to Ikorodu. From Ikorodu, we would go in the direction of uh, Imota Imota to. At this thing and then turn turn to a where it was very circuitous, very draining uh, journey in those days. But when a large Latif Jack on the opened up the Victoria Island, the the Morocco to a where you know uh, arterial road before I take eventually under Fashola expanded it. But when a large Jack on the opened that arterial road. It turned literally, it turned from Victoria Island to Lekki, became uh, a very valuable real estate asset. And look at ultimately the, the magnitude of the investment, real estate investments uh, that have populated that, that axis. So uh, that may just be uh, that may just be a, 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 a kind of uh, simple uh, this is not what may likely emerge if the Victoria Island to Calabar Road were to were to come to life. How would you want to respond to that? Exactly. Like I said, economically, the project makes a lot of sense. Um, when you look at like what you said, real estate will look at terrorism. I mean, and tourism. Oh, yeah. And again, you, you look at it's not just Lagos, it's going to pass through about 13 states. And that also is um, uh, an added advantage to every of those states that this road is going to pass through. You just need to, and, 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 and when you're saying pass through, that means sometimes we might begin to see less activities in the in the Benin Shagamo axis of the road because there could be a link route through that uh, coastal road whereby you will not have to just cut it up and get to Benin um, rather than going through Benin Shagamo, uh, seeing the roads and uh, practically not very well, not very good at the moment. So it creates other um, link route like what you have just said the opening up of the Victoria Island exit, Morocco down to Epe, what that has done to that area. Same thing will happen here, and it's a coastal route. And so, and again, what one area that a lot of people are not looking at is that it's going to come with a link that would link for railway, the lake, uh, the Calabar, I mean, Lagos to Calabar rail, railway is going to be also on that same route. So, it's first of its kind in the in, in Nigeria, and so it's going to be a, a huge thing for. Or for 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 uh, tourists to want to come and see one and again to enhance business activities. Um, look at what is happening these days in the Eco Atlantic. A lot of um, the tourists are coming to see what's happening here in the Eco Atlantic. Um, um, even the, the 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 almighty American embassy is now will be located in Eco Atlantic very soon. So that tells you what uh, very, the very soon, be. very soon, or. Uh, 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 I, I guess I read somewhere that they've started building the biggest American diplomatic mission outside of the uh, United States in the Atlantic. Yeah, in the Atlantic. Yes, exactly. And so you, you can see what projects like that could do. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I feel the business climate will be fine to receive that project. But the challenge has always been this is a project that has been tiered for years, and um, it's going to take eight years to be completed. Um, I, even if we are so excited about um, the mode of funding, not all governments. But again, there are still details that need to come up because that means it's a private sector um, move road. They will, they will have to be toying. They will have to be uh, toll gates along those routes because government, will, uh, private sector will not just take their money there for people to just come, come and go, they want to recoup their money back. So those are part of the um, um, uh, 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 costs that we'll be paying in the long term. But I, like I said, economically, that is going to be a game changer. And it could also lead to other major infrastructural um, uh, projects that might come. 
from other states to link up even with the coastal coastal road. So I it's economically it makes a lot of sense. But like we always say, sometimes the economic side of it, you have to have to look at the human angle of it. Uh, people will be displaced no matter how small it will be up to five hundred thousand. I, I, I was they still I was going to ask Bjordan Shomumi, I wouldn't know if he's back now. I was going to ask him to just oppose. You see, um, as, as seemingly inconsistent with uh, best practices that the approval of the project seem to be painted, to be painted in or painted with, um, one is also very concerned that we don't get into the kind of cul-de-sac that the English uh, civil engineering uh, industry has gotten itself into relative to, relative to, say, a country like France. The French, if they want to do a project, they do it. You know, they don't, they don't faff around, they don't over-debate, they don't over-litigate. Look, I, I know projects in England that has, that has been going almost 30 years now, and uh, one was, uh, in fact, second, uh, uh, expansion of Heathrow Airport had to be, had to be ultimately be, be suspended. Uh, apart from that, the H2 project, almost 20-something years, debate, processes, litigation, has been, and yet, as we speak, because of the Olympic, the French are expanding Seriously, their light rail and their underground system, they are rebuilding Paris in a magnificent way. And I was reading somewhere that, you know what, they, they were even speaking condescendingly about, about uh, English-speaking countries, that we, have, we seem to have perfected the art of letting processes choke the need for development. I wonder if they do, if they do can, the kind of the kind of litigious and contentious uh, the processes that we do in this part of the world. I, I wonder if China would have developed as far as China is now with all. Uh, just what would be your response to that? You hit the nail on the head. Like my, that's my fear about this project. Um, a lot of people have said that um, we are we, they are more interested in the Lagos exit of the project. By the time it gets to out of Lagos, it will uh, it will not see the light of day because. They feel that will only bring development to Lagos, but uh, we hope uh, it will not be like that. Uh, hopefully, the government will get their act together because uh, funding is not going to be a problem unless those uh, means of fundings now begin to 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 get issues like you have said in issues of liquidation and others. And I'm more concerned about what the proof of the National Assembly might have on this project going forward because we know we know what proof are in this country even if at the end of the day uh, some of these proof have not seen the light of day or they have end up sometime in destroying these projects because a lot of people become more suspicious about them because the members sometimes get so emotional they don't look at the economic uh, uh, viability of this project they begin to look at the sentimental part of it that my people are affected this is going to happen. So that's my fear. Hopefully, Mr. Um, President Tinubu will have the political will to do the right thing to make sure that this project see the light of day. To his ultimate conclusion. Since an eight years project, hopefully he will be able to do much if he has a second term to finish it. Thank you very much, Muktar, for uh, guesting on the show this evening. We want to appreciate your consistent consistency uh, thanking you for adding value always. Uh, this is where we wrap so. it up for today. I am Bola Oba. Have a good evening. <laughs>